Daphne Richards and this is Augie. This week's question is another one that we get all the time. Why do leaves turn yellow and fall off of otherwise healthy looking plants? This is one of those questions that's not easy to answer since there are so many possible reasons for this symptom. When I get this question, I always feel like a doctor who can't give you a definitive answer for why you have a persistent cough. You don't have a cold, you don't have the flu, so it might be allergies, it might be your sinuses, it might be any number of things, so you'll just have to wait, out, wait it out until the symptoms pass. I always feel frustrated by this response when I visit the doctor, until I remember that often I have the same answer for people with plant questions. Sometimes it's just impossible to pin down a specific reason for particular symptoms. In the case of yellowing leaves, it might be that the plant is getting too much water, or it might be just that the leaf is old. It could also be that the plant is lacking in nutrients, so the plant decides to sacrifice the leaf and no longer wastes precious resources trying to keep it alive. If a leaf is not green, it's lacking in chlorophyll and unable to do its job, which is to perform photosynthesis and supply the plant with carbohydrates for growth. The remedy for this instance would be to fertilize the plant. But if the plant is getting too much water, obviously the solution is to cut back on watering. You can tell if the plant needs water by pressing your finger down into the soil as far as you can. That's about two inches, and you don't need to water if the soil's not dry at that depth. If the top two inches never dry out, the soil below that definitely doesn't. To confuse you even more, another reason for healthy plants to develop yellowing leaves and drop them might be not enough water. So the key to solving water issues is going to be watching the soil and checking the moisture level quite often for a while. It would be a good idea to purchase a moisture meter. You can find very affordable ones at most nurseries, and there's really no need to buy an expensive one. The good news is that overall yellowing of older leaves is not a sign of a disease, and it's rarely a sign of insect issues. So my best advice is to remove the yellow leaves and just pay close attention to your plant's growing environment. As with that persistent cough, this symptom will usually run its course with very little effort on your part. Our plant this week is Phlox paniculata, cultivar John Fanuc. You might see this plant listed as deciduous, but I've found that it performs better when treated as a perennial, meaning that you'll shear it to the ground, forcing it to produce all new growth from the roots. Phlox will look fuller and healthier and have more flowers if you do. John Fanuc Phlox should be planted in a shady spot that receives bright but indirect sunlight. As with most shade-loving plants, it does need a little extra water but don't overwater it, which will cause it to rot. In my garden, phlox will often develop new leaves that have intravenal chlorosis, yellow leaves that still have green veins. That's because it prefers soil that's slightly more acidic than ours here in Central Texas. This problem is easily remedied by using a fertilizer with a little iron in it. Fertilizer products that are designed for acid-loving plants will clear up the problem in no time. We have another great viewer photo this week from Kathy, who uses Trisha's recipes for fertilizer teas on her container plants, with fabulous results. Nice balcony, Kathy. Out in your garden, if you have fruit trees that have become overgrown in the center, prune out some of those branches so that the rest will be healthier. We'd love to hear from you, so please visit us at klru.org ctg with your questions and plants of the week from your garden. Mm -hmm.